Folkestone is an art school. Interesting. Oh, I put the other one. Somehow that's too determined by the angle of the rock. Still needs to be upright. I've got to put that artwork there! I really like these green blobs on these bits of old floorboard. Human beings can appreciate art, but I think I'm going to leave these for the seagulls. So artists who make things are usually either sandwich makers or coral makers. Of course there are other kinds of artists as well, but are you a sandwich maker or are you somebody who appreciates the value of coral? And I'm going to explain that to you now very simply. So if you're a sandwich maker, you might be a painter actually, and it's about working in layers. So I'm going to make a sandwich now. So I'm going to put down, that's going to be my bread. These wooden panels are going to be the bread. And I think on the first layer in my sandwich, I'm going to have some Tunnock's tea cakes. So I'm putting out these Tunnock tea cakes now. And so you might be somebody, you might paint the ground of the canvas. You might put uh, rabbit skin glue on it to see, seal the canvas so that the oil doesn't get into the canvas. And then you might think, oh, well, I'm going to paint that surface white. So let's paint that surface white now. Okay, I'll find a white panel to do that. Here we go. So I've painted that surface white. I've sealed it. The tunnocks are the rabbit skin glue. So that's nice and sealed now. Let's make sure that is sealed there. Yes, that looks good. <laughs> okay. And uh, so now I might want to put something on this surface. So if historically we, you would have put a ground on there, it might have been uh, something it, of a kind of neutral colour like uh, Indian red. Uh, but I'm going to have my ground be a kind of grey ground. And so my ground is going to be made out of railway platforms. Put my railway platforms on there. And then you might begin drawing things out. And if you're a landscape painter, what you would do would paint either the sky or paint the ground or, or, or paint the, begin painting the landscape, but you would paint the things in the background. So for the background, I'm going to use these, uh, I'm going to have a background of carriages here. And that's actually a southern region background. So maybe my my uh, landscape that I'm making is of the South Downs on the way to Brighton. So that's the background. I've got, you've got to watch out with the, you've got to watch out with the, uh, the actual in India red ground that you don't have too many line side huts cropping up there. So now I'm going to begin placing things on that 
landscape. And some of the things I'm going to be playing, I'm placing some chamomile wafers on that landscape. So this might be houses or people or fences or cows. Or if it's a portrait, it might be a nose. And then I'm going to put my top surface there. And I might have a variety of smaller pieces of interest on the top. So people, clouds in the sky. And I'm going to represent that layer by some screws there. And of course, the last things that you put into a painting are the kind of human interest and perhaps if you're making landscape, traditionally you might have some horses, like stubs. He would have some horses and he would paint that on the top layer of the painting. Or if it's a military painting, you might have some soldiers. We're talking about history paintings now. It's not good to have a sandwich without any meat, so there's a pig. Yeah, have some horses on the top. So then we need a top layer for the sandwich and I'll, I'm going to use this guitar for that top layer of the sandwich. That's how to make a painting using the sandwich technique and having lots of layers so you see things through different layers. But you could be a coral person and it could be that all your paintings or Sculptures are about edge and placement, things sitting next to each other, colours relating to each other. So the coral person doesn't layer things up like this. So the idea and the reason why I call it coral is because it's about placement and edge and it's also about how things are arranged and it's about how things have a pattern and a shape. It's also about colour but if you're a kind of somebody who's interested in relationships, it might be that you think, oh, we should have an even relationship and distribution of colour and form across a surface. You could say, oh, that's about composition. So we need to have, you know, you might think, oh, there's no tunnocks tea cakes over here. So perhaps I ought to have that. And then that balances up with a tonic tea cake that's over here. So you could be that kind of image maker. Or you might say, oh, well, it might be more exciting to have some imbalance. And I have all my carriages over here to create a dynamic. And then people might wonder, oh, painting's all about that pig. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, whichever your approach, it might be that it is actually about colour. You know, you might think, I've got this green carriage over here, maybe I want to balance that off with a red carriage over here. But in any case, you could say that both the sandwich technique and the coral technique are somehow about formality. We've got the imagery, whatever that means, platforms, sweetmeats, screws, dead military horses. We could say, oh, well, the painting's about that. It's about the subject matter. It's about the pigs about the relationship between the pigs and the tunnocks. Or you could say, actually, this artwork is about the spiky forms of the Phillips head screws against the more curvaceous forms of the horses or the geometric forms of the platforms. Artists who are classic coral people are Matisse, or uh, Mondrian. Mondrian is interesting because he is a geometric coral person. 
So he might go, okay, I'm gonna have all the elements of my painting geometrically in relationship to each other. So the subject matter is subservient to the layout. Now you could say, actually this is a conceptual thing because it's not a painting. It's not seriously about form or arrangement or about layers. It's about didacticism and explaining something to you. So probably, it's probably better to think it's actually a more conceptual approach. But nevertheless, it's still about coral or sandwiches. Are you a coral person or are you a sandwich maker? Or is it all about ideas to you and form doesn't matter? <laughs> Folkestone is an art school. It's your studio, your imagination station. So I've got this beautiful cerise paint. What's it called? What do, what do one shot call it? Magenta. Incredibly. Um, it's an incredibly beautiful pink with a lot of colour in it, with a lot of pigment in it. So this is about placement, where you place things, but it's also uh, about uh, ideas about composition. So we think about ideas about composition, about uh, visual dynamics really, where things are, but it's also about hiding things and revealing things and to get the eye to look across a surface in a particular way. So the eye has a blind spot called the fovea and what my paintings play on is that you read a painting from left to right or you read a text in a book from left to right but when you look at a painting you look at it following the narrative or the form or the colour or its tonality but you have to read my slogans from left to right on some level to understand them on a basic level but as you're doing that the blind spot in your eye is blocking out colour relationships and your brain is looking for those colour relationships and so one of the things that happens is that if I'm painting this very bright pink on top of yellow and I paint it here, but I also paint it here and there and there, your mind is looking for the pink narrative, not looking for the meaning of the slogan. And as you read the slogan, the pink narrative or the the pink letters pop in and out of your field of vision. And it's almost like going on a roller coaster ride. And that's happening with, you might be looking for the green and the green is here and there and there. And the yellow is placed all over it. Sometimes the yellow will be underneath the green, sometimes underneath the pink. So there are different narratives and stories going on but the principal narrative is going from left and right, reading the slogan, your voice needs you. But of course the painting is also about your voice needing you. When you study art in school, or when you get your kids to study art in school, what you're doing is literally teaching them to sing and to think, to come up with ideas of their own. And you're teaching them how to do that. And so that they do develop their own voices. If we don't teach children art in school, they don't then develop their own voice and we don't hear from them later. So 
So I think that was a wise choice, covering it in pink. If in doubt, cover your paintings in hot pink. They always look good. Supersize that painting! You gotta supersize that painting! A chance to play before you decide what's what. Artworks can be like big maps of ideas which you are asked to navigate. You are not really here. Your homework is to make a map sandwich. Get a map and cut it up, layer it up and create a new world and then think about that world and develop an artwork from that map sandwich.